waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines of the info war. We are witnessing 21st century warfare in America. We are witnessing a consortium of multinational corporations, foreign banks, you name it, working in concert against the American people, against our economy, and against our president. And if the people fully knew how bad it was, there, there would be a revolution in this country tomorrow, a violent one. I don't want that. And the media continues to misrepresent and says that I want violence. But they don't have any examples of it that they can point to that aren't edited out of context. Now, here is just last week, on the 4th of August, Deep State's going to kill the president, Alex Jones claims. Then it literally says stuff like gay frog and, and random weird stuff and has weird edited things I didn't say to make it sound like I'm insane when I really laid out the specifics of how they're preparing it how they're promoting it, how they're getting it ready. Now, we had the former director of the CIA say that there should be a coup to remove the president two weeks ago. Now, every morning I get up at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and I go to Infowars.com, and almost every morning there is a new high-level Democrat from the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, you name it, people that are all on record illegally spying on us, doing illegal torture. I mean, you name it. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I spent an hour this morning looking into this individual who I'd read about before. I'd seen his name. I went, because he just said CNN analyst, we're preparing to kill Trump. He says Trump will be killed by the government, by the deep state, which also doesn't exist. The deep state's going to kill Trump. But when Alex Jones says it, he has such credibility, because I said it first, Oh, deep state doesn't exist, and Jones is insane. These are the tactics. But see, when they say it to legitimize it, it's okay. So we're going to play that clip. This is Philip Mudd. And this guy is horrible. He is a creature of the Clintons, entire Clinton pedigree, a Mueller appointee out of nowhere sycophantic, you name it, to direct the CIA takeover of the FBI. That's the office he runs. On TV, implying that when Trump jokes that, oh, they kick people out of our embassies, well, we may, got some cost cuts there. <laughs> you know, making fun of Putin, that's what Trump does. They go, oh, you want our CIA fired. You are, you know, kicked out of the embassies and all this stuff. And he's like, well, that's, they're gonna, we're going to kill Trump. And, and, and the host is like, whoa, 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 you didn't mean that. He's like, yeah, no, we're going to kill him. So when we come back from break, we're going to play that clip for you, but it gets better. Mr. Mudd also says that when he's done with that, he's going to go over and they're going to arrest Congressman Gowdy, and they're going to chain him up to a wall and kick his teeth out. Yeah, because that's what... Philip doesn't ever do the tooth pulling himself or the torture or putting people in coffin boxes or skinning people alive. Mr. Mudd directed all of that. Yes, yes, he's the one on the illegal torture dossiers and all the rest of it. Wow. And man, he's gonna, he's on another clip on CNN saying, I'm, I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna kick Gowdy's ass. Wow. Yeah, I bet, buddy. I'd like to see you in a ring with Gowdy. Take one look in Gowdy's eyes and tell he'd unscrew your little anti-American head. But here's the deal. The media will spin that and say, I call for violence. He's the one saying, we're getting ready to kill the president. That's a piece of arrogance. The gravity of where this country and this world is, I don't think I have to tell anybody watching or listening that we are in a group of cascading crises globally that are only intensifying and the special interest running our world seem to be asleep at the switch just busily stealing as much resources as they can 
and then arrogantly walking around talking about how powerful and invincible they are. The stuff that failure is made of, pride goeth before a fall. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God but me. To paraphrase the Bible. Let me just get right to it. We have watched and chronicled most prominent rock stars, hip-hop people, Hollywood types making vicious anti-Trump statements, anti-conservative statements, anti-American statements, cheerleading our economy falling apart, cheerleading that uh, the agenda to restart the economy uh, fail, attacking Trump's children, grandchildren, And calling for his death. And then having articles every time I cover it in the same publications that call for rioting and call for the president's death, Newsweek time, they will then say, I'm insane, no one has said that. And then not show where they said it a month or two before. Now think of how they sit there as known inverters of logic and truth and lie to you. Just last week, August 4th, deep state's going to kill the president, Alex Jones claims. It goes on to say, with no proof, Jones says that there is a plan to kill the president. But then they linked articles saying Jones actually says kill Democrats with no video, no proof, no, just total lies. Just in Newsweek, Jones is a liar. He says kill Democrats, kill more Democrats is the quote. And it's a group of authors that then link to each other's stories. It's, it's incredible. Now, the reason I raise this is you had two weeks ago Brennan coming out and saying, we, you know, there's already a plot going, not impeachment, but to suddenly remove the president. And then you've got Al Gore on Late Late Show three days later saying, oh, we're just going to remove him bipartisanly. Let's all work together. Same thing Brennan said, former head of the CIA. The guy that arrogantly said, watch your mouth. And, and there's Clapper, former head of all intelligence, who illegally spied and lied to Congress and all this, agreeing with him saying, yes, yes, this is happening. And Blitzer's totally freaked out. Because, I mean, he, he's been in Israeli intelligence for 40-something years. I mean, he's a spy. He's he, a, a leftist Israeli operative. He, he knows how serious it is to be discussing coup plans in public. He just he, he doesn't even know how to speak, he tries to correct them. And they say, no, no, Wolf, we're doing this. We're moving now outside of law. We are going to ignore his orders and we're going to remove it. And the plan is already in motion in the next few months. I'm not going to play the clip again. I've already played it like 10 times. I'm going to play the new clip right now. Because there's so many of these. Uh, I've got a compilation of them we're going to play a little bit later. Where they have not your average CIA person. But Philip Mudd, you want to go down a rabbit trail, there's all sorts of investigations and criminal investigations and lawsuits. This guy is the guy that ran the CIA torture operations. The mind control operations, all of it. it, 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 it when I say ran, a liaison in the middle of all of it. Just, just type in his name. It's all over the news. A huge scandal, on and on and on. Then he's sent in by Obama to take over the FBI and to put the CIA in every department and start running operations against the FBI. Oh, but they spin that, that he was the director of their counterterrorism division. And it goes on and on. So this guy goes on CNN and says the deep state is going to kill this guy. The, the, the quote is the government's going to kill this guy. I mean, the incredible arrogance of, of Brennan saying you better watch your mouth to president-elect and then couldn't believe it when Trump fired him. He said, I can't believe it. I, I, he said, I thought it was a joke. Clapper, 
all these guys are are arrogant because they own America. They run America. They get money from Saudi Arabia. They open the borders. They take Muslims off the terror list and don't let the FBI investigate them under Mueller. And it's still basically that way. And Trump's trying to change it. And Schumer says, oh, Trump's going to get in trouble. We've been spying on him. The intelligence community has seven ways this Sunday to bring you down. Oh, but nobody's planning to bring the president down. Now they've got. They've got one of the real nasties. And he, he doesn't torture people to death. He doesn't bury people alive. He has people do it. And they have CIA psychiatrists that then carry it out. Wonder what Dr. Pachinik can tell us about stuff like that. But he'd tell you there's much better ways to get things out of people than doing that. But see, it's so much fun, though, and it's, it's so powerful. When you're when you're somebody like Mr. Mud, I need to say your name is Mud with us, sir. I mean, you people are crazy. You're on television saying there's a plot to kill the president. We're going to play the clip, and then I started searching. You're all over the place as a CNN employee, shooting your mouth off about how you're how you're going to physically. Assault Congressman Gowdy. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's over the top. The, the Secret Service visited Pastor Brown after he met with the president, met with senior members of Congress that told him there is a plan to kill the president. And when he first came on, they just said, remove him suddenly. He talked to his congressional source. They said, no, 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 they mean kill. Yes, when they say suddenly, without warning. Neutralize is a word they use. Yes, neutralize means kill. I want to get him back on Sunday if we can. The Sunday broadcast. They send the Secret Service to him and kind of acted like maybe he was bad. The Secret Service isn't going to go talk to Mr. Mudd. Because... This is the new deep state royalty. I mean, he can go on CNN. We're getting ready to kill the president. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm so upset by this. But as an American, my brain instantly, when I saw this, went into modes it's never even been into. I mean, I was it, it was like understanding. I'm not even angry at this guy. I was realizing something has to be done to these people. And now, I mean, they need to be getting SWAT teamed today. They need to get their ass hauled up in front of a grand jury, indicted, and sent to Leavenworth. I mean, this is, uh, third world countries don't act like this. This, this, is, this is crazy. The hubris, the arrogance, the bravada, the danger of a senior CIA guy controlled by the Clintons and Mueller, and they are so incensed and so getting ready and plotting to kill the president that they're probably trying to kill him every day. They're trying to poison his food. You know it. And they're on television with the ongoing coup plan build up to it. And by the way, if Americans think you're going to sit around and eat popcorn when all this goes down, it's going to implode the economy, and they're going to go for broke. You can't just say you're going to kill the president. Here's the takeaway. They're saying they're going to kill the president in the open. This was all staged because they need to get it green-lighted because they're getting trouble getting it lined up inside the government because there's a civil war going on, like on the deck of the ship, mutiny on the bounty, people deciding which side of the ship they're going to go to. Well, I know which side. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights. The election we had, the the honor and the duty and the and the and the courage of Trump to absolutely bull doggedly ignore the attacks and the lies and the and, and the disinformation and the death threats. I am not just going to continue to pledge that I'm standing with Donald Trump in this republic. I am honored and am just embarrassed of myself that a few times I thought, should I a little bit halfway hedge my bet? Because who knows what's going on in this whole operation. They could dig something up or make something up, and then it'll, 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 it'll fall back and look bad on me. And I'm like, no, I'm 100% totally in. This is what we're made for. Skip this break.
We are designed to have clear-cut decisions of good versus evil like this. And if folks don't pick the right side, it is so dishonorable, but you're also missing out on being able to really be involved in the retaking of this country. Because let me give you the big news, folks. We are winning. They could kill Trump. They can kill me. And believe me, if they take Trump out, they're going to come after everybody. And it's we, everybody's got to be ready. And I'll tell you, it's we don't need to go on the run. That's all I'm going to say. Not going to have to come looking for me to kill the president. And I mean it. I'm done. So that's what it is right now, you people. These, these people are unbelievable criminals. I mean, my God, they are on TV saying they're going to beat up Gowdy. These Clinton thugs. And, and, and so many people they've killed in the investigations. So many people that are just little people that saw something or heard something. Just, just, just to make sure everything's clean, they kill them. Mothers, fathers, young people, children. Oh, you see a CIA plane coming with drugs? Kill the 12 and 13 year old boys, put their bodies on the railroad tracks. Why? They didn't do anything. You ran the whole sheriff's department, the whole police department. You just killed them because you, 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 you got people on staff that just want to kill a couple of little kids. That's who you are. And as we all know in this life, when things come to this type of level, we're going to find out who everybody is. And know this, you reap what you sow. Hillary Clinton. Philip Mudd, a disgrace to this country. And our, our media, which is globalist, run complete fake news, is siding with North Korea on CNN, the Washington Post, like Trump is ratcheting things up. And Trump just said he's locked and loaded and may preemptively strike. Trump's quote was, if they do anything unwise and attack us. But again, everything is misrepresented because we've got globalists that are so corrupt and so evil and so out of control and so bad that they instinctively side with North Korea, just like 1994 when they gave nuclear reactors and the missile secrets and Jimmy Carter went over and delivered it to him for Bill Clinton and then our media turns around and blames our president and says he's endangering us with North Korea and Russia, so he needs to die. That's what Mudd's saying in the context. You people presided over the Arab Spring. You presided over empowering North Korea. You presided over imploding our borders. You presided over all of this, over sabotaging the nationalist, Chiang Kai-shek, and putting Mao Zedong in power to kill 80 million of his own people. And now that big, giant, slave-powered superpower is over there with nuclear weapons and just arrogantly thumbing it in our face, infiltrating all the agencies, the government, the bureaucracies in just that cold, soulless, communist, robotic way, communist meets capitalist way. And then we get Mr. Mudd spinning it that, oh, we shut down these Russian embassies and buildings, diplomatic buildings. And so they've shut down the equal number and mainly just kicked out their Russian employees that are there, you know, typists and stuff like that. And Mudd then spins it around that our CIA people are being kicked out. I mean, you're not even supposed to say it's CIA people at the State Department, and he knows that. But see, none of that matters. They spy on us illegally. They control the economy. They give themselves all the plump uh, jobs. They, they shut down their competition. They perch on us like Kim Jong-un does North Korea. It's just that America was so great and so rich and so much more free that they've gotten away with so much more. And we haven't noticed all the parasitic stuff as bad. They're eating through the resources and putting us all in debt and then admitting under Obama internment camp plans for 50 million Americans. I mean, that was real army manuals 
that were declassified in 2010. Army.mil, how to process your social security numbers, and they use the Soviet term re-education camp. That's like saying, and we send you to, you know, Dachau. I mean, why even put Dachau on the name of it? it it's all just meant to completely normalize it and just say, we're going to implode the economy, we're going to have the haves and have nots, we're going to have ration cars, we're going to control people through food, so they want you all uh, dependent on them, and they're going to have social engineering. You think the collectivism and the communism and the wordsmithing and the brainwashing and then the political correctness is bad now? This is nothing. And then all the raging universities swollen to the busting point for their malice revolution that was already supposed to be happening with Hillary in right now, they're contained and they've been promised jobs and power. I mean, we go to these Maoist meetings. We've, we've infiltrated them. I mean, they're quasi-public, and they're talking about up there with professors and city officials, and, and they get government money, how they're going to be running this department, how they're going to be running that department. And they, they do run things here in Austin. They do run things in San Francisco. They're not well-meaning liberals. They are hardcore, vicious authoritarians that read books about authoritarianism and thought, I want that job. Well, you know what? I read those same books, and you know what I want? I'm going to stop you. And our listeners are going to stop you cold and stop you dead. And, you know, I've got to get over the fact that whatever happens to me or my family now or you or anybody else in this is, we didn't ask for this, we didn't do this. When you kiss your children goodbye, when you go to school or when you put them to bed at night, don't think that, oh, if you stay on the sidelines, they'll be safe. You're going to kiss their whole future and their whole world goodbye if you don't put it on the line right now and just say i am committed you want to bang heads you want to play chicken i'm pressing the accelerator down and i'm bracing and i'm ready to go to nirvana because our children shouldn't have to play chicken some of us are going to have to bang heads to make sure they've got a future because the tree of liberty is watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants that's thomas jefferson my friends I don't have a death wish. I don't have any of that. I existentially know these people are evil. They're authoritarian. They're oppressors. They are the filth of the earth. And they have sided with radical Islam that they use to set up their police state. And now they're going to flip that around. It's even in their own documents and go after Christians and conservatives and libertarians and patriots and patriots in our own government, our own media, and our own systems turned this around desperately fought the election, stopped Hillary, who thought it was going to be given to her, did steal five states, failed to steal six. They are hopping mad because they were ready to go with the plan you're already seeing. Don't you understand? I know what they're going to do because I already knew what the plan was. Most of it's public. The only thing new is they want to kill Trump, but first they've got to kill him in your minds. If they really get his poll numbers down, then they've got to kill him using a right winger or some nut that the claim was, you know, mad at Trump for, you know, something. Um, you can see how it's going to be scripted. Or they're going to poison him and say he had a stroke. And then so they can fight over the power. They'll, oh, we don't know how, if he's going to come out of it or not. They just, you know, got him at the Naval Center or wherever, drugged up. This is happening now. And, of course, you know the president's security people are watching. They know. They're not getting this from me. They know. They just tune in because it's the one place you can really get what's going on. That's why suddenly Sean Hannity's saying the exact words, the exact facts, because they create transcripts. Patriots in the government go, this is dead on. Hannity's never had people fill his teleprompter. He's working with high-level folks because people now know this is real. And it's not about me getting credit. If you want to understand why they're coming after us, it's because we are directly over the enemy command base, dropping 10,000-pound bombs on them. Boom, 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 politically. And they are just freaking out because we've got their whole operation. So now they're flipping it around and going, okay, we'll hide it in plain view and act like it's a good thing. We're going to kill him when he's popular. <sighs> Man, you people are crazy. I'm going to tell the police and everybody else, you better choose which side you're on right now. 
And you better think about who is in command in your departments and, and who they are. And you better do your search engines on them and find out who they work for and who they've been with. And if they've been deep state with the Democrats, these big foundations, or been rhinos, they're basically enemy soldiers when they pull the trigger on this. You have to, you have to choose sides now. Are you with George Washington? Or are you with Hillary Clinton? It's God's making this so cut and dry. All right, I'm going I'm to play the clips of this guy when we come back. And we, and we put this video out from the live show. We'll obviously put it on the front. Uh, but these are the times that try our souls. And they are now on CNN saying they're preparing with high-level CIA people to kill the president. Then they're going to come after everybody else. They want to break this country. They want to break your children. They want to sexualize your children. That's their main mission. Yeah. Uh, Hillary, by the way, just got caught in more sex crimes. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Paul Watson is serious. You'll hear him here. You'll see him here. You'll see him, I guess, when we post videos to Facebook. But he is leaving YouTube because they have blocked or removed most of his videos. So YouTube is censoring 90 plus percent of the conservatives, of the libertarians, not just demonetizing diamonds and silk. Really sweet, smart, great ladies, funny, really positive, bubbly. They've been banned. They've been demonetized. People say, well, leave YouTube. It, it's a monopoly. It's had monopolistic practices. It advertises as a free town square. You bring the YouTube, and then they selectively enforce it. They let leftists say, kill us. That's okay. They're now taking down conservative sites. If you show a Hitler clip and say, we've seen the dangers of big government before, then they say, you're a Nazi and remove. Uh, this has happened. To, uh, Paul gives examples. This is happening to professors and people. They go, oh, you're a Nazi. And you go, the clip is of us saying we shouldn't repeat what the Nazis did. But even if you were, you should have that free speech. But see, that's how that works. It's everybody. So we're going to be talking to Paul Watson in, in a moment, but he wrote the story that's up on Infowars.com. Thanks to YouTube, you know, we're able to see without watching CNN on a regular basis, we're able to have the viewers, Humet, human intelligence, flag it, post it, bring it to us. But oh, don't worry, CNN won't take down the high-level CIA official who also works for CNN. This isn't some CIA guy like Anderson Cooper that just does it because it impresses his friends. CIA analyst on Trump. The government's going to kill this guy. Well, who is that analyst? It's Philip Mudd, who ran the CIA's torture operations. They call it enhanced interrogation, rough interrogations. And, you know, I, guess, I, I, guess, I guess next time I shoot an elk, you know, right in the head, you know, that, that's an intense interrogation. And the whole point is, is that this is the killing end, the torturing end of the CIA, okay? This isn't the Anderson Cooper wing of it. And it it's the Democrat-controlled operative who was brought in by the Democrats, his appointments by Democrats, and then Mueller, the globalist operative, put him in over a new department at the FBI under Obama, Basically having the CIA begin to take control of the FBI. This is incredible. Under the guise of creating a counterterrorism information center. And he is the one, in, in this context, we're going to Paul. As they build towards this coup, the censorship is hundreds of times what it's ever been conservatively. It's massive. Google, Facebook, Twitter are admitting censoring. They're censoring the president's tweets. They're, they're, they're blocking his son's tweets. They're blocking Drudge, sending out jobs numbers from CNBC, saying this is improper content. I mean, you know when they're moving that they go to levels of censorship that totally discredit them and, and, and makes the public turn against them because they don't have a choice because they've decided to try to have an authoritarian takeover. And they're going to try to sell that to the military and sell it to the police. But the good news is the military and police have woken up to a lot of this. And so this is amazing time to be alive, but they don't care. Just like they had Madam President stuff already printed up that she was going to be the president. And they had fake photos. Here she is winning that night. It, it, all fake. Because they're, they're, they're that confident. 
you analyze this thing, and, and, and I talk to people that have overthrown governments, been involved in, in analyzing coups. This is not a good prospect for these people. I mean, what are they going to do when they've all been saying kill the president and then they killed him? They got imams saying kill gay people, cut women's genitals off, literally. They've got imams on YouTube praising the Pulse nightclub massacre, but Paul Watson is having his videos removed and blocked on modern art being funded by the CIA, and he shows the CIA admitting that they want ugly art and ugly culture. That's why they're mad. Because who do you think runs Google? And when I say CIA, I mean the big foundations that control it. The leftist, globalist, anti-human people that are at the top. We're going to Paul Watson, but here's the clips. Here's Trump making a joke about, you know, Russia closing some of the embassies uh, to the U.S. as a retaliation. He goes, oh, well, I guess we've got some layoffs. You know, we, we, we've cut some cost here because Trump's been cutting government everywhere. They turn that into some insult to the people at the State Department and the CIA people that are obviously there, uh, as the people don't know that. And it's this little temper tantruming baby that wants to be more popular with his colleagues like Brennan and others that are on TV saying we're going to have a coup the next few months outside of the Constitution, outside of impeachment. Just he's going to be gone soon. I've never heard of something this crazy. I mean, hell, they might just have Trump on a podium and just have somebody, public, maybe Hillary walks up and just shoots him right in the head, and we just put a crown on her head right there, and everybody falls down and calls her Madam President. I mean, that's that's absurdist. Sounds like Monty Python. But they're doing this. And, and then Trump is sitting there surrounded by a bunch of cowards, most of them that are having drinks with the deep state, going, we'll keep you around once we take over. Hey, how's that deal going? People that just want money and position they've stolen and who want to squat over America and squat over flyover country that they've been parasitically feeding on and that they hate. Like Lloyd Blankfein putting out tweets going, China's got better infrastructure and I'm moving everything over there and America's a joke. That's Goldman Sachs that's used American power to take over the world, literally crapping on us and rubbing it in. So we're going to talk to Paul Watson about this in a moment. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is what Trump actually said. And then the response saying the government is going to kill this guy. Here it is. Do you have any response to the Russian president expelling uh, 755 workers from our embassy? No, I, I want to thank him because we're trying to cut down on payroll. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm very thankful that he let go of a large number of people because now we have a smaller payroll. There's no real reason for them to go back. So he, I greatly appreciate the fact that they've been able to cut our payroll for the United States. Save, we'll save a lot of money. Mr. President, what was your response, Phil Mudd? A couple surprises. Let me give you one bottom line. As a former government official, government's going to kill this guy. He defends Vladimir Putin. Their State Department and CIA officers are coming home. And at Langley and at Foggy Bottom, CIA and State, they're saying, this is how you defend us? And, and, we, uh, Phil, before, I, I, I mean, I want to ask you a question, but Phil, just... To reiterate, obviously, when you're talking about killing, you're using that as a metaphor. You're not obviously, talking about. Yeah. I, I, I just, I just. What I'm make... saying is, is government. People talk about the deep state. When you disrespect government officials who've done 20 or 30 years, yeah. they're going to say, "Really? You send the, Vladimir Putin sends officers home, and you support him before you support him?" I just, yes, I just want to, I just yes. want to underline, absolutely. Amanda. Sickening, evil spin by a guy that never killed anybody. He doesn't do the torturing. He just sits around and gets off on the on the power that he directed those programs and then directed the takeover of the FBI by the CIA for Obama in this deep state coup. And then he's on CNN trying to show off and blurting out what they've got planned, what they're setting up. So the president needs to move against this guy. And it, I mean, is this America? Is this who we are? You got a guy saying, we're going to kill the president. What would you do if you saw mud walking down the street now? I mean, I mean, I feel guilty as a man that I am not getting in a car and, and going to try to have a talk with this fellow. Because, it, I mean, at some point... <laughs> 
These people have to understand, you're not America. You don't get to run the shots anymore. You don't get to sell us out to China and everybody anymore. We're not going to bring in your 80% military-age men to repopulate America, you anti-American. We are not putting up with you anymore. And, and I'm, I'm obviously not going to do anything violent. I'm a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I couldn't even, I couldn't even <laughs> probably, you know, beat up a child. I would never do anything to anybody. The whole point is, is that they're the ones calling for violence. They're the ones constantly pushing it. And how far will it go when somebody that's run divisions of the real killers, not him, is now saying it. I mean, this is a clear and present danger with the history, the means, the know-how, the connections, Deep State, the Clintons, Mueller, saying this on TV. It's like having a child molester next door to your house. And he moves in, and then he says he's going to rape your kids, and you just sit there and don't do anything about it. It's, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, this, this is what this guy does. This is what, overthrowing, killing, torturing, and he's on TV on a propaganda network, breathlessly saying the deep state's going to kill him, and he also says he's, that, that, that he wants to kick Trey Gowdy's butt. We're going to play that clip. But Paul Watson, uh, thank you for joining us uh, here today. Uh, you know, it's cold in the studio, but I start sweating when I get this. this it's not this angry. My, my metabolic system starts really kicking into gear here. When you see a, a capo of Murder Incorporated that's supposed to be focused at bad guys like Kim Jong-un and Al-Qaeda in America going, we run things, we'll kill the president, you're going to do what we say, and Clapper saying, shut your mouth, president, and Schumer, you shut your mouth, president, we got seven ways to take you out. And it's always the little wimps that tell the people to go do the killing that, that, that are the ones that want to push it and think they're God. Paul, what do you make of this? I mean, it's incredible, Alex. You mentioned just that. This is nothing new. Chuck Schumer implied the same thing before, was it even, you know, before Trump even took office when he said they've got seven ways from Sunday from getting back at you. Now, watch that clip again and notice when Jake Tapper gets all flustered and realizes what's going on, he comes back to him and says, oh, you mean metaphorically. And he like says, yeah, yeah, well, uh, dismisses it, and then goes on to double down by pointing out, oh, the deep state's going to be really pissed off with him now that he's said this. So he actually, he, does, he doesn't even deny it. He doubles down. He does the proviso. He does the proviso. It, it'd be like if somebody said, yeah. go to Mud's house, which I'm not saying this, go to Mud's house and kill him because uh, he, he's a traitor and deserves it. But then you add, oh, but I'm just being metaphorical. But. He's really a bad guy and needs to, you know, be found hanging yeah. from his neck, which I'm not really saying. But see. Now, bear in mind, Alex, Pastor Rodney Brown, who merely said I spoke to a congressman who warned me that they're going to try and take out Trump. No, that wasn't a direct threat at all. It was a warning. It was an attempt to protect the president. He got a Secret Service visit. Is this guy going to get a Secret Service visit? I mean, in the very least, he needs to come out with a full public statement right now, retracting, apologizing, um, because this, this is absolutely bizarre, the fact that he would come out with this. But again, it, it shows how brazen they are now and how up on the high horse they think they are with this Russian collusion crap, even as it collapses. I mean, the nation, a big left-wing publication came out yesterday and admitted there's no evidence, which is why they're literally now going after apartments that Trump rented to Russians six years ago and trying to get, in, get, trying to get him on that because there's no evidence whatsoever. They're starting to panic, um, and now these threats are becoming more known. But, I mean, they, Alex, they must be just completely bombarded. I mean, the Secret Service, when you have the mainstream media legitimizing violence against the president, they just must be dealing with threats multiple times daily. You had people scaling the White House fence over and over again. You had people within the Secret Service saying they wouldn't protect Trump, like Obama loyalists saying they wouldn't even protect Trump. They must be completely overwhelmed at the moment. Um, and that's why, you know, way before he even became the front runner for the GOP, Trump was wearing a bulletproof vest. That's why he never buttoned up his suit jacket. Uh, we broke that story first through Roger Stone. So, I mean, they've been dealing with this for over two years now. Now it's, it's literally being paraded out on CNN. Oh, but we're bad because we say we don't want a civil war. By the way, Trump's telling the Secret Service, 
He wants to walk at the front of motorcades. He wants to do more rallies. He's countermanding them and doing that. And it's not that he wants to die, but he's very fatalistic. Trump is committed. He doesn't care what happens. He's all in. That is so manly. He is delivered. He is so good. And I, I have to say it. I just cannot. I am ashamed that, that he isn't getting more support. This is everything we ever asked for. And we've got the dug-in evil government trying to block the reforms to make the country successful and decent again when we see how it's just coming back from the dead with just a few few things he's gotten done and they are just howling and screaming and everywhere saying we've got an ongoing operation he'll be gone the next few months and it's not going to be you know through impeachment or grand juries they're saying in congress yes get ready he's going to be killed you better get behind us going after him. See, it, it's chicken and the egg. They're saying, we're going to take him out. So they're going and asking congressman, what are you going to do? I've gotten these phone calls. What are you going to do when this happens? Because you just need to stand down and not do anything, okay? No, that's how they get us all. That's how the Bolsheviks were able to take over all of Russia, okay? Uh, incrementally. It was always, oh, getting this group to appease, then they'd kill them later. No, you do not appease bullies, thugs, terrorists, scum. We're standing against Obama and Hillary and the Islamicists and mud and all of them. We're done. We're done. We're on the bridge. We're not getting off the bridge. You want to come? Come through us. We're here. You're going to do it in front of God and country and everybody else. You want to fight? Better believe you got one. And now, what do we do, Paul? What do we do as they're organizing the coup, pushing it, preparing it, selling it, getting us ready for uh, taking over the government, having new elections, which will never have real elections again? This is it. We're winning. That's why they're this desperate. What do we do? What does Trump do? I mean, Sessions, there should be grand juries. You can get grand juries all over this country with this information to SWAT team all these people for their records. You know they're all plotting the killing. They're so arrogant, they're out on TV plotting it. I want them all arrested now. I'm tired of this garbage. They want to kill the president and talk about it on TV? We are coming for them. Well, the key is, Alex, where, I mean... The thing that's stopping it is us talking about it. That's the main thing. You've had Savage come out and say there's going to be a coup. You've had Limbaugh come out and say it. Then you've got people like Chuck Todd on uh, NBC News who reads this memo, you know, for which McMaster fired all these people talking about Islamists and globalists and the fact that they're trying to take America down. Perfectly logical and sensible. And he's like, How? this is such a dark conspiracy theory. No wonder they all got fired. This is bizarre. You read the memo, it's just Islamists and globalists hate America. They want America to fail. Completely makes sense in the course of history and, you know, modern reason debate for the past 10, 15 years. And they're like, oh, my God, this is completely insane. They are they the greatest Judas Iscariot. The they exist. They're the biggest Benedict Arnolds the world's ever seen. They are the bad guys of the bad guys blowing up their own golden goose because they're jealous of it and want to pee pee on it to show how big they are. Stay there, Paul. Let's talk about the censorship. Now, listen up, folks. People want to claim they're going to fight for America. All you got to do here is get the word out. Say your prayers, support the broadcast, and let everybody in your community, your family, your church understand how serious this is. And we've broken through. Sean Hannity's talking about it, Limbaugh, uh, Levin, Drudge. It's, it's all out there. It's real. And it takes a lot to get folks to say, hey, there's a plan to kill the president and these people are criminals. Because it sounds crazy, but they're doing it. And see, it's my job to say the things first. I know we're going on like I've been doing for eight months, so we had them off at the pass. So they've gone from doing it covertly to we forced them out overtly, which was my plan. And I told them my plan. So that's where we are right now. And we're only able to do this because we have you, the audience. It's not that I'm that smart. It's you. I haven't even plugged this hour. I need financial support. We are running two big specials, the 1776 special and the old special. I'm now calling the BuzzFeed special. Because I mean, we're talking 55% off, you name it. Because this BuzzFeed thing is the holy grail of, of, of ridiculous. And wait till what we discovered in the next hour, their big disinfo piece, where they admit, well, these products are totally clean and they're as advertised. Do you understand why they had them tested in California? Because that's where they have Prop 65, where there's more lead in the air. You, you know, you, you have to label it for Prop 65 or you can be sued. It was passed by lawyers to be able to sue companies, not just supplements, to, 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 to have levels that are impossible to not have in most products. But we are California level. 
We still do it, even though it's a huge hassle and almost impossible. We're able to do it. They sent it to California, did the testing, and didn't find it. And they're so upset right now. And it made sales explode. People are like, wow, this big lab did this, and it's totally clean? I, I mean, I I'm not kidding. We have seen sales go up 40% the last three days, two and a half days. Anyways, Paul Watson, I appreciate you coming on. You're about to go on a well-deserved uh, holiday. Uh, but also, let's let's now talk about the censorship on YouTube and why we're doing this. Because I agree with Diamonds and Lace and others and what you're doing. we got to go ahead and, and, and pull ourselves off YouTube to, to illustrate that they want to incrementally shut down free speech. We have to do this, I think, as a protest to show that it's no longer a platform that can be trusted to make them reform or to get President Trump to move with antitrust action. Because they are operating in a discriminatory way towards anybody who's not basically aligned with eugenics-based, hyper-modern neoliberalism with a smattering of Ma Maoist ideology. I mean, they're just banning everything now, and it's beyond Chinese level. I mean, they're banning stuff China doesn't ban. This is, this, this is next level. So tell folks about your video that's gone viral uh, where you say you're done. I'm done with YouTube until they change their policies or until they signal that they're going to change them, Alex. I mean, Congressman Dana Rohrbacher came out with a quote last night. The mistreatment of conservatives and libertarians by tech monopolies is a civil rights issue. And that's what it comes down to. It's Google and Facebook. Those are the big two. OK, I was banned by Facebook yesterday. Get this, Alex, for posting a picture of a famous, famous ginger YouTuber who made a parody joke video about feminism 18 months ago, who was in on the joke. And because I posted a picture of it again 18 months ago, which obviously offended some feminists. They banned me on Facebook. So literally, Facebook is now being run by the same people who screamed bloody murder. And let's explain something. Moore. You're a public figure attacked in newspapers and TV every day. So am I. If we don't have speech, no one is. They want to destroy us with straw men, not let us respond. And let's explain. You had Facebook videos, Paul, with 30 million views, some of them each. I mean, bigger than CNN. That's why they took you down. That's why they're trying to ban PewDiePie, because they don't want anybody they don't control with a voice. Yes, folks, Paul had close to a billion views on his personal Facebook page. We have billions and billions on ours as well. And they annihilated it for Copper Cap, who I know is a listener and friends with Paul. I mean, it, you know, for having fun videos about patriarchy rules the world. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. This is incredible. They're moving GCN. against us. But ha! Ah! We're fighting back. It's a civil rights violation. You are organized and racketeering against us.